Now, now the whole thing with John Jones, like I want to believe him because he's so good to the point where he was beating everybody off stuff. Why would he need to take stuff? Like he was kicking everyone's butt before, you know, like it wasn't like he was losing and then started taking steroids and then beating everybody. He was beating everyone off shit. So I have to give him the benefit of the doubt, but then to p- fail something twice, you're just, I mean, that's got to drive you crazy. The whole John Jones thing drives me crazy. I mean, honestly, John Jones, the greatest of all time, the greatest to ever do it. And, and, and the thing that's really frustrating is, is imagine if this guy tried. <laughs> imagine if he tried even a little bit. How incredibly amazing this guy could have been. I mean, it's it just, he, he, he could have been the biggest star ever. God knows what he would have you know, finished accomplishing in the light heavyweight, then in the heavyweight division, maybe he'd have, you know, had a, had a title defense at heavyweight that would never be broken. And the, the endorsements and the fucking, I mean, everything that that guy could have been is unbelievable. So, all right. So we, so we fight Tyron Woodley. Let's say you beat Tyron in MSG. I think that's, I, I talked to Danny yesterday. He, he, he liked the idea of it. You fight Tyron Woodley and MSG, then what do you do? Do you call out Conor McGregor? You have to see, man. Definitely, you know, I got my eye on Conor and GSP, both those two. They both intrigue me. So, you know, I got my eye on them. I, I think that little uh, coked up leprechaun might have something to say as well. He's talked about getting a third belt at welterweight. So, you know, this is all chatter. You know, let's see if he puts his mouth where his money is. Have so, you ever even been rocked in a fight? Have I ever been rocked? Yeah. Not even close. Never, never rocked in a fight. Never rocked in training. Never, dude. I'm, I'm the most flawless fighter in the game. Least hit. Never do my. I got an iron chin, anyways. So, you know, no one's even came close to fucking rocking me. And what uh, belt are you in jujitsu? I'm a super black belt. They gave me like the super black belt. They, they didn't want to give me a belt because I'm so above the belt. You know, the belt is all a joke. You know, the thing. It's like a Ponzi scheme, man. Just. It's just a money laundering system for people to get money. Oh, it's about respect, you know. But these are also the same people that are going and cheating on their wives, having infidelity in, in the MMA gyms, uh, cheating on their taxes, just piece of shit type people. So, you know, those fundamentals of martial arts and the respect, it's all bullshit, man. It's all, it's all a hoax, man. Now, now CM Punk, are we going to give him a third chance? What do you think? No. Yeah. I, I no, I, I know. Don't think, I, I don't. I don't think he really wants a third chance. Uh, you know, hopefully, after this last fight, you know, the, the guy has. He's got balls, man, and he's got guts, and <clears throat> he went on the world stage, and, and and he gave it two shots, man. A lot of people want to talk shit about CM Punk. Get in there. Yeah. C- come on over. Fight, yeah. Fight. Fight one of these guys. It's easy to sit in your fucking living room and talk shit. Come in here. This guy actually. Was a huge star at WWE. Came over here and put it all on the line twice, man, in front of the whole world. Now, if people can't respect that, then then you're a fucking idiot anyway. No, nothing but respect for him. It, it did get kind of sad though at a, at a certain point where you're like, man, why? You know, why why are you doing this after like maybe someone should have told him that was training with him. Hey, but man, it, we're not we're not you ready. You can't tell somebody though. You can't tell somebody don't do the thing that you want to do the most. That, that, that CM Punk wanted to be a UFC fighter. He wanted to come and he wanted to fight here. He wanted it so bad that he fucking dropped everything and focused on nothing but mixed martial arts. Did these unbelievable... If you talk to his team, you know, next time you talk to Duke Rufus or Pettis or any of those guys and th- talk about how this guy was driving back and forth from Chicago to their place and, and would drive for hours to come out and train, would train forever and would be, the, you know... They, they, they all ended up respecting him, you know. No, one hundred percent. But and, and the guy went in there and put it all on the line. One hundred percent. But I did text one of his coaches the first fight, right the night before, and I said, "How's he going to do tomorrow?" And they wrote back, "Not good." So, right. I mean, that's. But at the same time, you're right. You you don't know much about Mike Jackson is zero and one. You're not putting him up against there against Diego Sanchez or some world beater. You're putting him up against a guy no, who. Tell me, tell me one guy who can walk into the UFC at 38 years old and compete uh, after he's been training for fucking months. 
<laughs> Nobody. I mean, unless you're an, a very elite level wrestler, elite level boxer, elite level kickboxer, maybe. I mean, you're right. It's, it's, it's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Yep. Friend of the podcast, Tyron Woodley, had to say, thanks to MMAfighting.com for the transcription. I ain't never in my life, I ain't never in my career, I ain't never in my existence as an adult human being wanted to fuck somebody up so bad, beat somebody so bad, embarrass somebody so bad, end his career so bad, take his life so bad. And I don't even say that figuratively. Literally, I'm going to try to hurt him so fucking bad that they're never going to want to let me fight in the UFC again. That's a fact. So that's what Tyron Woodley had to say, Ken Flo. Mm. Uh, I know a lot to digest if you didn't read that before the show today. But that's why I wanted to see this fight. I, you know, we love when there are heat on these matchups. And yeah. I know Tyron Woodley at times has been reluctant to invoke Colby Covington's name. Now Colby's the guy. And as you can hear, that's raw emotion from T. Wood. Uh, it is. And again, these are guys with a history, right? Uh, these guys have trained with each other. They, they do represent the same team over at American Top Team. Uh, they know the same people. Um, they've sparred before. So there's a lot of bad blood here, man. There's a lot of bad blood because, you know, again, Colby has had Tyron's uh, name in his mouth for a very long time. He's been talking a lot of trash. Um, and Tyron, in some ways, has been waiting for him uh, to, to deserve that actual shot to fight him. Well, he now has that. And, and Colby, you could say what you want about him, how he talks trash and blah, blah, blah. But um, he does back it up, man. I, I thought his performance against RDA was exactly, exactly what he needed to do to get the win. Um, and to me, that shows not only a toughness and, and a conditioning that is far superior to many UFC fighters, um, but it shows an intelligence. It shows an intelligence, Kobe Covington, to go out there and execute a game plan safely. Yeah. Um, and we also have to say that, you know what? A part of this credit should go to his trash talking uh, because for RDA to not be able to get that angle, to not be able to move laterally um, like we've seen him do in the past, you got to think there was an emotional attachment there. I'm excited to see this championship fight. I mean, obviously, you, you can tell and you can recognize that Tyron Woodley has some advantages on the feet um, and in terms of the power, certainly as a striking finisher. But I think it's a very competitive matchup, and I don't expect Woodley to be more than a two-to-one favorite. That's for sure. Yeah, and one thing, one thing is for sure is that you know Tyron being the more, uh, being more of a technical fighter, right? Um, he's a guy who likes to keep a certain pace where he can go out there and analyze and move around and be a little bit more comfortable. Um, Colby has a style that could really give anybody problems, including Tyron Woodley. I mean, no one wants to fight. Uh, that kind of pace. Uh, Colby will make you suffer. He's able to cr put a pace on you and get you to fight his fight extremely well. Um, and, yeah, you know, Tyron does have the wrestling to stop a lot of those takedowns, um, but it's still a pace that you, you just do not enjoy. There's no fighter out there that wants to fight that kind of fight against Colby Covington, and that's right. something he will always have in his back pocket. So for Tyron, he's going to have to be on point with his footwork. His wrestling will have to be perfect. Um, you know, does Tyron hit harder than Colby Covington? Absolutely. Is he the better striker? Yes. Well, so was 